The number line is, as its name suggests, a line with a lot of numbers on it. Actually, it has every number on it. It's usually drawn as a horizontal line, and you can move along it in two directions. To the right, known as the positive direction, where the numbers get bigger, and to the left, known as the negative direction, where the numbers get smaller. You'll often see tick marks drawn on the number line, which usually indicate where the whole numbers are located. Let's draw a point at this tick mark, and suppose this point represents the number 2. If we move to the right, or in the positive direction, the numbers get bigger. So this point over here is 3, this point is 4, and this point is 5. So which number do you think is represented by this point over here? Right, this point represents the number 6. As we move in the negative direction, the numbers get smaller. So the tick mark directly left of 2 is 1. Which number do you think is represented by this point? Exactly, this is 0. And if we keep going left, we'll have negative numbers, like negative 1 and negative 2. Which number is represented by this point over here, two tick marks to the left of negative 2? Nicely done, this is negative 4. Let's assign the appropriate numbers to the remaining tick marks here. Now all these numbers we've written so far are called integers. An integer is any number that's a positive whole number, zero, or a negative whole number. Between the integers on this number line, we have all the numbers that are not whole numbers. For example, where on this number line would you say 3.5 is located? Precisely, the number 3.5 is halfway between 3 and 4, and so sure enough, it appears halfway between 3 and 4 on the number line. As a final challenge, take a look at this point over here. What number would you say this point represents? Excellent work! It turns out that this point represents negative 1.25. So the number line is a graphical, or visual, way to represent all the numbers, and we'll be using number lines, also known as axes, all throughout algebra. Started, let's draw in a number line, and let's mark off the integers from negative 3 up through positive 9. Take a look at this point over here. What number would you say this point represents? If you're not sure, click down here to review. Right, this is halfway between 4 and 5, and it's about 4.5. Now let's move on to addition. Suppose you have the number 2, which is represented by this point over here. And let's say you want to add 3. This is a plus sign, which is the symbol for adding numbers. When you add a positive number, like 3, that means you're moving right on the number line. So 2 plus 3 means we can start at 2, and then move 1, 2, 3 to the right. And now we're at 5. So 2 plus 3 equals 5. Try using the number line to solve another example. What's 1 plus 7? And by the way, sum, S-U-M, is a word for what you get when you add numbers together. Nicely done. This equals 8, and you can find that by starting at 1, and then moving 7 to the right. Sure enough, you're at 8. Next, try a few more examples. What's 2 plus 5? And also see what happens when we switch the order of the numbers, so we have 5 plus 2. Nicely done. Starting at 2, and then moving 5 to the right, leaves you at 7. And starting at 5, and then moving 2 to the right, also leaves you at 7. So 2 plus 5 equals 5 plus 2. In general, when you're adding numbers together, you can add them in any order, and you'll always get the same answer. So next, let's see what happens when you add 0. For example, if you start at 7, and then move 0 to the right, where do you wind up? Precisely, 7 plus 0 equals 7. Whenever you add 0 to a number, you'll always get that number back. Next, let's add decimals. What's 2.5 plus 3? What do you get if you start at 2.5 on the number line, and then move 3 to the right? 
Exactly. Starting at 2.5 and then moving 3 to the right puts you over here, halfway between 5 and 6. So 2.5 plus 3 equals 5.5. Sometimes adding numbers can be tricky and a lot of work. For example, what's 1.46 plus 3.75? For questions like these, you'll want to use a calculator like the one down here. So you can type in 1.46 plus 3.75. Pressing equals reveals the answer to be 5.21. So 1.46 plus 3.75 equals 5.21. So try using the calculator to solve this next question. Suppose you have $284 in your bank account and now you're depositing another $397 into the account. How much money is in your account now? In other words, what's $284 plus $397? Excellent. 284 plus 397 equals 681, so now you have $681 in your account. Let's look at one last example of addition. Try adding three numbers together. What's 2 plus 1 plus 4? If you're not sure how to evaluate this, click down here. Excellent work! So 2 plus 1 is 3, and then adding another 4 gives you 7. And what if we were to switch up the order of these numbers being added? So what's 4 plus 2 plus 1? And what's 2 plus 4 plus 1? Before we get into subtraction, let's draw a number line from negative 6 to positive 6. Try using it to evaluate this sum, 2 plus 4, and click here if you'd like to review addition instead. Precisely, starting at 2 and moving 4 to the right leaves you at 6, so 2 plus 4 equals 6. Now let's talk about subtraction. Say we're starting at 5, which is over here on the number line, and let's say you want to subtract 4. This minus sign here is the symbol for subtracting numbers. When you subtract a positive number, like 4, that means you're moving left on the number line. So 5 minus 4 means we can start at 5 and then move 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, and now we're at 1. So 5 minus 4 equals 1. Try using the number line to solve another example. What's 6 minus 2? And by the way, difference is a word for what you get when you subtract numbers from each other. Nice. So starting at 6 and moving 2 to the left leaves you at 4. So 6 minus 2 equals 4. Try another example. What's 5 minus 8? Excellent! So if we start at 5 and then move a total of 8 to the left, we're now in negative territory. We're at negative 3. So 5 minus 8 equals negative 3. In general, whenever you have a positive number and subtract a bigger positive number, you'll wind up with a negative answer. Now remember that when you're adding two numbers, you can switch the order of addition. Either way, you'll get the same answer. Does that work for subtraction? To find out, try evaluating 5 minus 1, and then evaluate 1 minus 5. Precisely, so 5 minus 1 is 4. Meanwhile, 1 minus 5 is negative 4. In general, when you switch the order of subtraction, you'll get positive and negative versions of the same number. So next, what are 3 minus 0 and 0 minus 3? Right, 3 minus 0 equals positive 3. Subtracting 0 from a number will always give you that number back. And 0 minus 3 equals negative 3. Subtracting a positive number from 0 will always make it negative. Next, let's look at some decimals. What's 4.8 minus 2? 
And what's 3 minus 7.5? If you get stuck on these, just click over here and we'll figure them out together. Nicely done. 4.8 minus 2 equals 2.8 and 3 minus 7.5 equals negative 4.5. The more decimals you have, the trickier the subtraction problem can get. For example, what's 5.19 minus 3.46? Well, we can use the calculator down here to work out the answer. 5.19 minus 3.46 equals 1.73, so that's the answer. Try using the calculator to solve another example. What's 2.94 minus 8.05? Right, so 2.94 minus 8.05 equals negative 5.11. So for your final challenge, try evaluating this expression. 6 minus 5 plus 2 minus 7. Whenever you have multiple additions and subtractions, you should work your way from left to right. If you get stuck, just click down here.